It may seem that something like the speed of a car is an easy thing to describe, but speed isn't an absolute parameter. It is relative, and because every person has their own viewpoint on what is going on around them, it is easy for several individuals to disagree on how fast a car is going. If you blocked the view of the outside, a person inside of a car might be able to argue that the car isn't moving at all, while someone by the side of the road may say that it is going west at 100 kilometers an hour. Someone observing the car from space may say the car is actually moving 1,500 kilometers an hour in the opposite direction. This is because all motion is relative. Consider a weight hanging from a string. If you pull the weight up and let it go, it would start to swing back and forth. Now what if we put that stand the weight was hanging from on a stool and started spinning the stool? How would the weight move? The first law of motion states that an object in motion stays in motion with the same speed and in the same direction unless acted on by an outside force. And since the string the weight is hung from isolates it from the rotation of the stool, the weight will continue to move in the same side-to-side -side direction even as the stool and the stand the weight is suspended from rotates. So an observer from the side would say that both the stool and the stand rotate while the orientation of the swinging weight would not change. But we could change the motion of the weight simply by changing the location of the observer. If, for example, the observer was on the stool and therefore moving with it, neither the stool nor the stand the weight was hung from would appear to be rotating while the weight followed a curved, star-like path as it swung around from side to side, but did not rotate with the stool. Now consider a pendulum swinging on Earth. An observer from space, who is not rotating with the Earth, would see the Earth rotate, but the pendulum would swing back and forth in the direction of the initial swing. If, on the other hand, the observer was on the Earth, suddenly the Earth would not appear to be moving, and the pendulum would follow a complex, curved path as it swung back and forth independent of the rotation of the Earth. Here is another view of the same situation. In this case, we are looking down from above at a pendulum positioned right at the North Pole. If the pendulum is swung, it will swing back and forth in a straight line determined by the force that started it swinging. Again, an observer in space who is not rotating with the Earth will see the Earth rotate and the pendulum keep a constant back and forth motion, in this case left to right across the screen, as the Earth rotates under it. If we now restart the animation, but this time have the observer rotate with the Earth, the observer will experience a situation where the Earth is not moving while the pendulum path rotates. This is a well understood phenomenon, first described by the French physicist Léon Foucault as a way to demonstrate that the Earth rotates. These pendulum demonstrations are common in outreach centers and science museums around the world. The time it takes for the swing of a Foucault's pendulum to return to its original position varies depending upon where the, er the pendulum is on Earth. At either pole, it takes 24 hours to complete a full rotation. The time to complete a rotation increases at lower latitudes until at the equator the pendulum does not rotate at all. We can use a game of catch to demonstrate other implications of the relative nature of motion. If the observer the two people playing catch and the ground are not moving relative to each other. A game of catch is easy to imagine because the ball just travels back and forth in a straight line between the two people. If we put the game of catch on a spinning platform, things change. When the first person throws the ball, he applies a direct force on it in a straight line in the direction of the throw, and once he lets go of it, it travels in a straight line in that direction, independent of the rotation of the platform. An observer not rotating with the platform would see the ball's path as a straight line. The two players who were rotating with the platform would see something else. To them, it would look like the ball started in the right direction, but then curved away as it traveled. So even though the balls, from the ball's perspective, it traveled in a straight line, the throwers would describe the path as curved. Since the Earth is a rotating sphere, something similar to what happens in that game of catch happens when objects are thrown from Earth. It is not terribly realistic to think about two people playing catch far enough apart on the Earth to observe this, but there are plenty of real-world scenarios where this relative motion is important. Consider an airplane taking off from the equator and flying towards the North Pole. Sitting on the ground at the equator, the plane is actually moving at about 1,600 kilometers an hour to the east. As it lifts off at the equator, it keeps that eastward motion as it gains speed moving north. So even though the plane started out pointing at the pole and it travels in a straight line towards the pole, the actual path relative to the rotating Earth curves to the right. This happens because the speed at which a point on the Earth moves as the planet rotates is dependent on its latitude. 
with eastern motion being greatest at the equator and decreasing to zero at either pole. This is the Coriolis effect, and it causes objects launched in the air in the northern hemisphere to turn to the right, and objects launched into the air in the southern hemisphere to turn to the left. This pattern of turning to the right in the northern hemisphere and to the left in the southern hemisphere happens no matter where the object is launched or in what direction it is traveling. In addition to the effect on air travel, the Coriolis effect influences natural processes such as weather patterns and ocean currents.